This is part two in the Methodist Sections video series. Um, so in part one, what we started with was um, a truss. It had one, two, three forces that were acting on that truss, and then our two reaction forces. And what we're trying to do is trying to calculate the value or the force in member Y, X, and Z. And we're going to do this using the method of sections. So what we did is we cut a section through all three of those members, and then we turned those members or the truss members into forces and we just guessed the direction of those members. So what you can do then is then redraw that particular section just as a series of forces with the unknowns in there and the known forces and we started off by looking at member Y and calculating um, what the value for member Y was by choosing a moment at a specific point and uh, as I said in the last video, we chose this specific point because it was an intersection of a number of unknown forces, which when you multiply them by the distance, means that those moments become zero, which is why in our calculation, we only had the two forces of reaction here and the Y force, which was unknown in our equation, which made it quite simple for us to get Y. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to calculating X and Z. And uh, for this, what I'm going to actually try and do is just start a, another drawing of our truss. So that's our truss now because we've sectioned it. And uh, just as a reminder, we've got now a force here, which we found out was Y. And it was around about 168 newtons going to the right. We've got our reaction force over here, which is 270 newtons. And we've got our force coming down of 300 newtons, which we all know. And the two that we still don't know is this force over here, Z, and this force coming down here, which is X. So we're going to now go through the process of calculating what X and Z is. Um, at this point, I'm going to try and look at the uh, force X, and we're going to see if we can try and work out what X is. Now previously, if we look at what we did, is we chose a moment point up here, which eliminated this force and this force from the equation because these two forces are not known, so it makes it difficult. Um, there's three things that we can say about any one section or an entire bridge, which is an equilibrium. The first is that the sum of the moments is equal to zero. The second is that the sum of the forces vertical are zero. And the third thing we can say is the sum of the forces horizontal are equal to zero. So we can use any one of these three rules and apply them to this specific scenario because this section of the bridge is in equilibrium just as the whole bridge is. And so if we look at this, what we realize is that X is the only unknown force in this whole system with a vertical component that is unknown. So both uh, Z and um, all the other forces, this is, uh, 168 is are all known, but X is the only one over here that's got a vertical component, because this is X is made out of a vertical and a horizontal, that is unknown. So if we can work out what this vertical component is over here, up or down, we then will be able to find out X, because we know the angle that it's uh, acting at, and so on and so forth. And so what we've got to do is we're going to use this rule over here now, instead of using moments, to calculate what the value of x is, all right? And so, um, and I've done that just simply because, you know, I could have chosen a moment point over here, p, to calculate x's, but then I need to start doing things like calculating the vertical distance to x, and I need to start calculating, you know, the distances to other forces, and so on and so forth. It could get quite messy. So I'm just going to use the vertical. You could have used moments to do the same thing, but this is just uh, the way that I've chosen. So the sum of the forces vertical must all add up to zero. So what are all the vertical forces in this system? Well, we've got 270 minus 300, and then we've got this vertical component of X, and we've told that this is a 60 degree angle triangle. And so what we're gonna say is, you know, I'm gonna say add, because I don't know what the sine is, I'm gonna assume it's up, and I'm gonna say it's X times sine of 60 degrees. And that's the vertical component of x. So just make sure you understand y, x, sine 60, the vertical, that's a horizontal, 
and then the hypotenuse of a triangle is x, 60 sine means the vertical component of x. And so when we do this, what we can see is that we can quickly say that uh, x sine of 60 negative, because we brought it across the equal sign, is equal to negative 30. And so x is equal to 30 divided by sine of 60 degrees. And if you punch that into your calculator, uh, 30 divided by sine 60 equals 34.64. So that's now given us the value for x, which is 34.64. So now we know uh, x's value. We've calculated y. The last one we need to do is z. And in z, we can either, again, uh, choose moments, or we can choose the horizontal uh, uh, vertical sort of components. So if I was to choose uh, forces horizontal, I would have to add up uh, what our answer was for y is to our horizontal component x and subtract that and find out what the remainder was because all our horizontals need to add up to zero. Or else we can choose to do uh, moments which um, are going to be uh, a little bit more tricky and I think I'm going to choose that one just to show you again how we can use moments. So if we line this up and we say well these forces over here come through this whole system and actually intersect at this point. What that's going to give me is a point P over here where both our answers for X and our answer for um, Y intersect. And I'm doing this because, let's say for instance I calculated X or Y incorrectly, I'm now taking, eliminating two of the calculated knowns that I've done and I'm left with just the knowns that were given to me at the start of the problem. So if I'd made any mistakes effectively, I've got some um, chance of getting Z right still. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up the moments around this new point, point P, in a positive clockwise direction, and those must all equal zero because of our same set of rules. And if we do this, we see that uh, it's going to be 270, 270 times by 1, which is the distance that we have uh, from P to 270 in a perpendicular distance. 300, which is anti-clockwise, because 300 is spinning around P anti-clockwise, multiplied by 0.5, because that's its perpendicular distance from point P. And then the last one we have is this 0.86 uh, height from P to Z, because that, that's its perpendicular distance to Z. So um, I'm just going to assume that it is uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise. Let's just do anti-clockwise. So we're saying that it's actually going that way. Minus Z times 0.86. Now the reason I 0.86, because if you use trig, you can figure out the perpendicular height of a 1 by 1 by 1 triangle is 0.86. And so uh, with that in mind, that's all of our forces. Both this force and the x force travel through that point, so those two moments are equal to zero, so I don't need to include them. So effectively, I get z times 0 0.86 is equal to 270 minus 150. And so z is equal to, and we just get our calculator now, 270 minus 150 is 120 divided by 0 0.866 and if we divide that by 0 0.866 we get an answer of 138.56 newtons. So what we've done now is use moments um, both in the first time that we did it to calculate y uh, and then we went ahead and we used some vertical component to calculate what our answer for x was and then we again use moments to calculate what z was. And this is the, uh, the best, um, the hardest part of these kinds of problems is that you need to just kind of, I guess, in your brain, choose which one of these different rules you're going to use to solve um, one of these problems. And sometimes choosing one rule is going to make it a lot easier or harder than choosing another rule. But I hope this has helped you a little bit and uh, 
give it a go and practice these questions uh, a lot and look at past papers.